we already know that earth crust is a major source of metals hai na ki there are lots of <coughs> geothermal kind of effects lots of you know the uh, if we'll dig our earth then we'll get a lot of different different kinds of metals so here is uh, uh, so sea water also contains soluble salts like sodium chloride magnesium chloride etc sodium chloride means nacl and magnesium means mgcl right so your sea water contains salt obviously your sea water yeah matlab uh, in oceans different types of seas ponds all will contain salts the elements or compounds which occur naturally in the earth as are known as minerals because of what because of that uh, uh, you know um, that volcanic eruption uh, because of all that it naturally it, it naturally formed what your earth crust so these are known as your minerals and those minerals from which metals can be extracted is known as ores okay the elements which we found naturally in our earth crust that is known as the minerals and from the minerals if we can extract metals easily or profitably is known as the ores <laughs> so how we extract the metals let's see this the process of obtaining pure metal from ore is known as the extraction of metal here is written that the, the elements which occur naturally in your earth crust okay elements which occur naturally is known as mineral and those minerals from which your metals can be extracted is known as your ores and here is written what that the process of obtaining your pure metals the process of obtaining your pure metals from ores is known as your extraction of metal and some metals are found in earth crust in the free state while some of them are found in the form of compounds free state means your single element and compounds means like your h2o your different different types of compounds mixture of compounds and your free means single element we can also found a single element and we can also found a um, your group of compound the metals present at the bottom of the reactivity series are least reactive that we already know that below from hydrogen all the metals are less reactive and and above the hydrogen all the metals are most reactive so they are in the free state okay the metals which we found uh, below the edge they all are in the free state and uh, example your gold silver platinum copper these are the metals which we found below the hydrogen and these are and these all are present in the free state while your copper and silver are also found in the form of combined state as the in the form of your sulfide or your oxide but the your exception is what exception is your silver and uh, copper and silver copper and silver so these two are the exceptions except these two all the metals are found in a free state and and these two are the exceptions and these two are found in which kind of state your in a compound state okay compound with uh, means they combine with your sulfide or you can say with your oxide combine with your sulfide or your oxide okay these metals are at the top uh these are what these are the most reactive metals are highly reactive so they are not found in like as a free elements they never found they are always found in a compound way so this you got it now that how is the occurrence of metal occurrence of metal we measured it from your earth crust and these two salts we found in your sea water in the elements a single element or a compound which occur naturally in your earth crust are known as your mineral single element or compound is known as your mineral and from those minerals from which we can easily extract your metals are known as your ores so below the edge and um, above the edge above the edge these are the most reactive metals highly reactive and they never found in a free state and below the hydrogen all are found in a free state except these two copper and silver why because these are not then uh, these are not a free uh, elements these always present in a compounds and they combine with these two things sulfide or your oxide got it sakya are you there got it yes ma'am okay so next the metals in the middle these are the metals which is there in the middle one let's see once where is your um uh, उसमेंट 
we will copy this over here. So let me write your reactivity series. These are what? First is of K, N, A, C, A, M, G, aluminium, zinc, F, T, S, N, B, H, and then C, U, L, G, A, G, A, U. A, U, after A, U is P, T, right? So these are the less reactive. I'm writing L, R, and these are the most reactive. I'm writing M, R. Okay, most reactive for M, R, and least reactive for your LR. So now it's saying in the middle, your ZN, FP, PV. ZN, FP, and PV. These are what? These are the uh, elements which is in the middle of your this reactivity series. So in the middle of the reactivity series are moderately reactive and they are found as the oxide, sulfide, or carbonate in the earth. So this also found in a compound with, you know, in a compound matter. So uh, above H, all will be found in a compound manner, and below H, all will be found in a free state. Only two are exceptions, which are copper, your Cu, and your silver. Okay, C, copper, and silver is the exception. And these three, your Z and R and your PB, these are combined with say, um, your oxides, your sulfide, and your oxide, sulfide, and your carbonates. Okay, so this will combine with your oxide, sulfides, and carbonates. Now, what is next? In the earth dust, ore are of many metals. Our oxide, oxygen is very a reactive element and it abandoned to the earth. We already know that uh, um, if we heat something in the presence of oxygen, we heat something. How? Because of oxygen is present in the atmosphere, then only we heat something. So... There are different techniques used for the extraction of metals. First, use your metals of low reactivity, which is your below edge. Metals of high reactivity means your above edge. And medium reactivity means these three are your middle one, your medium. Medium or we can say your middle. These are your, and uh, uh, these are the low reactivity and these are the high reactivity. Okay, so now let's see. Summary of several steps involved. First, there's a ore. Concentration of ore is divided into three types. Metals of high reactivity means above edge metals. Metals of medium reactivity means the three, that three one. And metals of low reactivity means below edge. So wh what is metals of high reactivity means electrolysis of molten ore. Here what we will get? Because it is what? It is having a high reactivity. So obviously if there's a high reactivity, then it can then it can easily conduct electricity. So that's why here's written electrolysis of your molten ore. Then what you will get? We'll get a pure metal. Okay. And this is your metals of medium reactivity. Medium reactivity is divided into two types, your carbonate and your sulfide ore. So carbonate ore is known as your this thing sulfide ore is known as your roasting and what about low reactivity low reactivity means sulfide ores after sulfide ores roasting metals refining after these two will combine to form an oxide of metal reduction of metal and then purification of metal so these are the steps which are involved in the extraction of metals from your ores okay so what so from high reactivity what we will get from high reactivity means the thing the metals which are your above edge will get first your electrolysis electrolysis after that what we will get we will get your then after electrolysis very easy way pure metals electrolysis of ore okay all right this is your high reactivity high reactivity uh, high reactivity basically contains two steps first is your reactivity of your ores sorry electrolysis and second one is your raw metal what about your uh, medium reactivity one medium reactivity is your carbonate ore and sulfide ore carbonate ore and sulfide ore so these two will this is your roasting and this is your right correct yeah now this will combine and this will form what your metals oxide of your metals oxide of metals after that your reduction of metals and then your purification purification okay and what about your least one? What about your least reactivity? Least also basically contain three steps. See, your sulfide ore, roasting, metal, purifying. Sulfide ore, your roasting, your roasting what? Roasting your metals and then your purifying. Okay, understood?
that how we will extract the metal from ore how basically we contain three kinds of steps three types of steps first with low then your medium and then your high high basically contain two steps and this contain your four steps first your ores then it will roast metal and then refining after refining we'll get a pure metal and here carbonate ore sulfide ore and then it will combine to form your oxide of a metal after that reduction reduction then you will get a purification of metals so these are what these are the occurrence of metals occurrence of metals means how we are getting a pure metal extracting a metals from your pores got it uh, safia any doubt yes ma'am doubt okay now this is what this is your enrichment of ores so what is enrichment of ores what is ore ore means what is ore safia safia what is ores ma'am uh, they are uh, um we can obtain minerals and metals from them it's written now here that those minerals from which your metals can be extracted is known yeah, as yeah yes ma'am okay so enrich of ores the undesirable impurities like your soil your sand these are what these are the mixture of impurities are found in ore which is known as your matrix or gas okay so means your impurities impurities in sorry impurities impurities in your ore is known as matrix okay impurities like your sand or soil these are the two examples sand or soil found in ore is known as your matrix and removal of matrix from the ore is known as enrichment very easy and if we remove these kind of impurities the removement of matrix matrix means the this impurities and the remove removement uh, there is all time right uh, and this removal of this matrix is known as your enrichment okay the remove of this is from your ore is known as the enrichment or we can say concentration c o n c good okay uh, got it let's see impurities is what is your sand and soil impurities which is present in your ore is known as your matrix and removal of matrix means removal of ore means removal of impurities from ore is known as your enrichment so now you got it right what is enrichment now you tell me what is enrichment so are you there yes from no. the removal the removal yeah. of matrix from the ore and uh, the and removal of impurities and uh, impurities like what are the impurities um such as uh, soil and yeah yeah okay. now what is next the process used for removing the matrix from ore are based on the difference between your chemical and physical properties now now this is also the main point that the process which is used for removing process which is used for removing the matrix will depend on your physical and your chemical process right your uh, difference between your physical and chemical properties of that particular um, uh, uh, impurity means the removal of matrix process is also depend on the physical and chemical properties of that particular matrix means of that particular impurities so depending upon the nature of impurities different techniques are required eh? if some if there is like uh, some physical properties is there then uh, they need a different technique if some impurities is having some more chemical uh, property then they will need a different technique so based on the physical and chemical property we need a different different techniques to remove the impurities from your ore then we will get what then we will get your enrichment of ore now what is next extraction of metals first we are learning about the low reactive so these metals being less reactive can be obtained uh, can be obtained by reducing their oxide to metals by heating alone these metals being less reactive so first is what your neighbor means hgs this is what this hg means mercury right so when heated in air so when we will heat this in air so if we have to heat something then obviously in your atmosphere oxygen is present so oxygen is very good in heating right so we will combine your this neighbor means your hgs your mercury sulfide with your this oxygen so when we will heat this this is a sign of what heat so when heated in air it first change it into oxide now this c your mercury is changed into oxide means mercury oxide hgo hgo and then reduced into mercury metal and further heating and 
this will convert it into HgO. Uh, this will convert it into sulfur dioxide. Okay. If we will heat any metal with your uh, in the presence of your oxygen, so it will um, so it will uh, give what? First, your some kind of metal oxide, and again some kind of your metal oxide. Okay. Now, what is a copper glands? Means Cu two S. For uh, combining this with air, we are forming C two types of oxide. Na Cu with sulfur oxide, and then S with your sulfur dioxide. So this also means combining with your oxygen. So the product will be this is your reactant. This is your product. So product will be your oxide oxide. Okay. So what is this extraction of metals from this medium? You got it now. How to extract the metal from low reactivity? What we have to do first? We have to combine uh, this with your air, and then we'll get a mercury oxide or any metal combining with your oxide. So this is the process of your low reactivity. Now for medium is what? Medium is um, the metals in the middle of the reactivity series, like your iron, zinc, lead, copper. Okay, see iron. Okay, there's that. Iron, zinc, lead, copper is what is uh, is the metals which are present in the middle one of your the reactivity series. So these are moderately reactive. The metals are usually present as sulfides or carbonates in nature. We have already learned now. So these sulfides or carbonates are first converted into oxides because it is easy to extract the metals from oxide. How because this sulfide or carbonate will first convert this into oxide because to extract thing. To extract the metals, it is easy for you to first convert it into an oxide. So sulfide are converted into oxide by roasting, and carbonates are converted into by this. See here, it's written that your sulfide is converted into met oxide with the process of roasting, and carbonate is combined uh, is converted into oxide with the process of alkenation. So this is what first is your roasting. It is the process in which the sulfide Or is heated below its melting point in the presence of air. See, your sulfide is heated with air, and it's forming your sulfide oxide and your sulfur dioxide. Easy. Only iron, iron, zinc, iron, zinc, lead, and copper. These are the metals which are there in the middle of your reactivity series. So this will combine with your air to uh, oxygen. To form your zinc oxide or your sulfur oxide. Now, if this will combine, then it will give you uh, iron oxide, sulfur oxide, lead oxide, copper oxide. Okay, got it. So this is what this is roasting. And for roasting, we need what sulfide ion. See, if we will do for calcination, na, then in the product side we'll get a carbonate ion. Okay, we'll combine with what carbonate. Now we'll check. This also see extraction of metal. Its calcination means with a carbonate ion. See Z and CO3 means zinc carbonate. Now it's forming what zinc oxide and carbon dioxide. So here it is combining with carbonate, and there in the roasting process it was combining with your oxygen. Oxygen for roasting, and here for calcination it is combining with your carbonate ore. Now what is this reduction of oxide ore? It is the process of conversion of metal into metal. Yeah? It is the conversion of metal oxide ore into metal. With reduction of oxide ore into metals, we are reducing your oxide into metal. We obviously, na ki will uh, we will uh, will get metal how by reducing it to an oxide form. So here also we are seeing that see, uh, first we have to convert the sulfide or carbonate into oxide. Why? Because minerals are rich in oxide, and then first we have to convert it into oxide. So this is what zinc oxide and coke can be done by heating the oxide with a suitable reducing agent like carbon in the form of coke. What we have to do first we have to uh, mix this carbon oxide with coke. Why? Because coke is the suitable reducing agent. So it will form your zinc. And it will form your carbon monoxide. Okay, Safiya, any doubt till here? No, ma'am. It is easy now. Only you have to go through this, uh, this no, one. No, ma'am. Just next the equation. Ah, uh, and this also this table. The for carbonate ore, we are doing this. For sulfide, we are roasting. And for roasting, we need what? We need oxygen. Na na. And for this car, for that calcination, we need carbonate ore. Okay. What is this? Sometimes displacement reaction also we use to reduce the metal oxide to metal. Okay, metal oxides to metal. First we need roasting method. Then we learned about the calcination method. Then we learned about the reduction, uh, like directly reduction. 
and here one more method is there which is your displacement method the highly reactive metals such as your sodium calcium aluminium these are uh, the metals which is present in the topmost layer of the reactivity scale. so these are the these are used as the reducing agent because they can displace metals of low reactivity now if we will uh, check of manganese oxide and your aluminium first it is converting into a manganese aluminium oxide and heat is evolving from this so this is what this is a displacement reaction it displaces now see your oxygen is there after the reaction your oxygen is combining with your aluminium so this is also one of the example first here is a ferric oxide aluminium now this oxygen will combine with this see iron and then aluminium this is what this is your displacement reaction it displaces the oxygen to some other metals and this is what this is your displacement reaction this is a reduction of oxide or with the help of some reducing agent for carbon it's coke this is what this is your calcination here we use your carbonate or for roasting we need a oxygen now this is the high reactivity for low reactivity we saw this that uh, it is simple that uh, for uh, uh, example we are taking two hgs and cu2s we are combining with uh, oxygen and we are getting oxide for the middle one first is the roasting method here also see in this table this is what this is for middle one for medium for low we need sulfide or we roast it metal and then refining for middle we need two things calcination and they are roasting so here first we talked about roasting only uh, we'll mix it with what with oxygen here uh, your this method we have to mix this with your carbonate or reduction of your oxide ore is basically is this and then after that is your displacement method huh now this is for high reactivity so high reactivity also two steps was then electrolysis and after that refined so the metallic compound in the top series cannot be reduced by carbon or anything to uh, to reduce this we need what we need electrolytic reduction for this so what is electrolytic reduction see if we will apply this for sodium and uh, 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 and this electron will get a sodium uh, this reduced sodium for anode we need cl cl2 2 cl2 uh, electron this is what your oxidation okay reduction we already know what is meaning of reduction and oxidation also so here is what aluminum is obtained by the electrolytic reduction of molten aluminum oxide is known as alumina and here what we got we got nacl means na plus and your cl minus that's how we got this means from the uh, that what the high reactivity so there are basically three types of uh, three types of methods to extract the metal from oxide first is your high reactivity medium and then the low reactivity for different chemical and physical properties we need different techniques to extract so this is also what this is your electrolytic refining so what is this electrolytic refining many metals like these are refined by electrolytically okay how to do this in this process a thick block of impure metals are used as anode this is your anode means thick block of impure metal and thin strip of metal is used as cathode and this is what this is your cathode mean of pure metal and the anode is a thick one which is of impure metal this is a thick and this is thin now a solution of metal salt to be refined used as a electrolyte so there's a solution uh, in this in, inside this beaker so when electric current is passing when electric current is passing through this electrolyte from the electrolyte are reduced as metal which get deposited on the cathode and equivalent amount of pure metal from the anode gets oxidized to metal ion and goes into electrolyte and from there it goes to cathode and deposit this impure metal is going where is going to cathode means where the pure metal is there and it's and it is doing one and it is depositing over there and that's how we'll get electrolytic refining of metal see cathode anode acidified copper sulfate solution this is what this is a solution of copper sulfate see cu2 cu2 and your s this is your tank and this is your impurities means your mud so what we uh, what we did first we uh, first we try to pass some electric current from this metal from this electrolytic uh, solution and then an equivalent amount of pure metal from the anode gets oxidized and then that uh, pure metal which gets already oxidized this will go to your cathode okay safia
Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the cycle is repeated. Cycle will repeat, है ना? Uh, from impure metal and then it will deposit to your this pure metal, which is your cathode. So the cycle goes on. The soluble impurities goes into the solution, whereas the insol insoluble will settle down. This is your insoluble, which is mud over here. So this is known as your electrolytic refining on passing electric current. What happened? If we pass electric current, so your uh, metal ions from the electrolyte are reduced as metal which are deposited onto your this cathode set and a pure metal from this anode will oxidize and it, and it will go to your cathode it will easily deposit over there no this we already know what is corrosion now you tell me what is corrosion and it's a process in which metals react with the atmosphere to uh, to produce a, a sort of coating yes so it is a very slow process it is a very slow process of eating away of metals hai na so if we will keep our metal like this means in the environment so obviously it will react with your uh, air and moisture which is present in your environment so slowly slowly it gets corroded so example rusting of iron tarnishing of silver you formation of green coating over copper in copper we always see a corrosion which is of green coating and in this um, iron and all we see that uh, coating is of which color your um, brownish color right but in copper there is a coating of green in color so how to prevent this first we need galvanization galvanization means what we can do it is a process of coating iron steel with a thin layer of zinc if we will coat now if we will coat our iron or zinc with some thin layer then it gets what it prevented so it is done by the dipping the object in a molten zinc see if we'll take our metal and if we'll dip our metal in the molten zinc then that process is known as galvanize uh, galvanization and that's how we prevent the metal from corrosion second is what second is alloying means method of improving the property of metal if we will improve the properties of metal how we will improve it by mixing the metal with another metal or non metal then obviously if we'll mix one metal with another metal or metal with a non metal then it will coat it into two types into two layers na no? metal metal or metal non metal so that's uh, how also we can prevent the metal from corrosion third is what third is your alloying of a iron means pure iron is very soft and stretches easily when hot so it is mixed with small amount of carbon and then it become hard and strong so iron is mixed with metal metals to form different types of alloys like with your nickel and chromium stainless steel is obtained which is hard and we and does not rust so alloying is one of the method uh, your galvanization is the method and your alloying is method and here your alloying of iron is also the method to prevent a corrosion now we'll see what is alloying of gold <coughs> pure gold is also very soft so uh, it is called 24 karat gold to increase the strength and hardness of gold to make it a suitable making jewelry so how we need a how to you know convert a um, soft uh, gold into a hard gold uh, <coughs> with the process of this one means it is called a 24 karat gold to increase if we if we means if we apply, if we you know combine 24 karat gold so with combining with this we'll easily increase the strength and the hardness of gold that's so that all we you know wear in the in our neck that's the jewelry so example 22 karat gold means 22 pure golds are mixed with your some part of your copper and the cg what is painting the rusting of iron can easily prevented by paint ha huh. this is the very easiest way if we we'll paint a metal now then it will not uh, corrode so this is very easiest way greasing and oiling also your tin plating means you are painting your oiling your metals or you are plating your metals uh, by these three methods also we can easily help in what your corrosion of metals okay now what is next next is your alloy so what is alloy alloy is a homogeneous mixture of two or more metals if we'll mix two or more metals or if we'll mix metal with a non metal then it is then it became a alloy so it is prepared by mixing of metals and then cooling it like the electrical conductivity and melting point uh, melting point of an alloy is very less example brass and alloy of copper or a uh, copper and zinc these are having a very very what less because the melting point of alloy is very less okay 
so and this copper and tin are not good conductor of electricity when copper is used for making electrical circuits solder and alloy of lead and tin has a low melting point means alloy is basically a mixture it is what it is having a low melting point it is also a not good conductor of electricity okay and these are what these are the examples of alloy now the wonder of asian indian metallurgy the iron pillar near kutub minar in delhi was built more than 1600 years ago by the iron workers of india um, kutub minar is there in the delhi you know which was built more than itna years ago so they had developed a process which prevent iron from rusting now that mineral now that pillar is made up of iron so obviously slowly slowly corrosion will happen but here they did what this is due to the presence of thin layer of magnetic oxide fe3o4 on their surface for this means to resist the quality of your pillar so it has been examined by scientists from all parts of india the iron pillar is 8 meter high and weighs is having a 6 tons means 6000 kg so that's how we uh, prevent the iron pillar which is there in the kutub minar how by with the presence of this thin layer of magnetic oxide if we we'll cover that pillar with a thin layer of magnetic oxide then we can easily prevent that type of pillar with the corrosion so today we discussed about this occurrence of metal metals having low reactivity medium reactivity high reactivity so high reactivity enrich means to remove the impurities from your ore so this is low reactivity high react medium reactivity means two methods again your roasting and your galvanization method and then your some kind of displacement methods also and with your high reactivity what we have to do only two steps electrolysis and then refining this is what refining of metal corrosion two three um steps are there to prevent the corrosion galvanization alloying your painting greasing plating okay understood any doubt so now this chapter is completed met next we will start org okay carbon and its compound okay safia got it okay then thank you bye thank you ma'am